Her palms began to itch again. The sensation snapped her out of her drowsy state. Her promise to leave the house faded away as the need to draw took over, but she managed to pour her coffee first. The stairs loomed in her mind, and she intended to make only one trip up and one trip down. She reached her room and took several sips of the coffee before pulling out her sketch pad. Water. The first scene was water, but not the cove she had seen before. She let her hand make its own choices, choosing colors and charcoal, creating places she didn't recognize. The pages flew at first, then her hand seemed to find what it was looking for and slowed, adding details, features. A creek bank emerged. A tree hung over the water, its gnarled roots exposed. Her hand filled in a dark sky, moved to the water. A figure appeared, half submerged. Waves of pain and fear washed over Alex as she drew. This one, a woman, she thought, knew what was coming, felt it all. A harsh, acidic taste burned Alex's throat. Another page, another figure, an indistinct figure, a man, naked, standing in water to mid-thigh. The creek. His back was to her as he leaned over, washing himself. A pile of clothing lay on the bank nearby. Her hand found the deepest crimson, smeared it on the man's arms. Nausea roiled in her stomach. The crimson stain found its way to the grassy bank and then the creek, spreading in the chill water. As she finished the drawing, she realized he was washing away blood. She gagged, ran for the bathroom, and vomited. This time, there'd been a great deal of emotion from both the victim and the murderer. That's when the drawings were strongest, when she saw the most. Finally, the pictures faded out of her reach. She flushed the toilet, then bent over the sink and splashed cold water on her face. The horror stayed with her. She turned on the hot water and stepped into the shower, needing the ritual cleansing.